a client named Alex, who is a 25-year-old white male, comes to the social work office at the university seeking help with his opioid addiction. He reports using opioids for the past two years, experiencing negative consequences in his personal life as a result of his drug use, and expressing a desire to address his opioid use with medication-assisted treatment MAT. Which medication is most likely to be prescribed for Alex's presenting problems? A. Fluoxetine B. Buprenorphine C. Lithium D. Amlodipine B. Buprenorphine Alex's history of opioid use, negative consequences in his personal life, and desire to address his opioid use with MAT are consistent with the criteria for opioid use disorder, and buprenorphine is commonly used as part of MAT for opioid addiction and can help to reduce cravings and improve overall functioning. Which of the following concepts refers to an individual's unique experience, beliefs, values, and customs shaped by their upbringing, family background, and exposure to different cultural practices? A. Cultural identity B. Ethnicity C. Culture D. Race A. Cultural Identity Cultural identity is a complex and dynamic concept that encompasses an individual's sense of self based on their cultural experiences and background. It involves a sense of belonging to a particular cultural group, while also allowing room for personal values and beliefs. For example, a person raised in a traditional Japanese family may identify strongly with Japanese cultural practices and values, while also incorporating aspects of their own personality and experiences. This concept is often interwoven with ethnicity, race, and culture, but it highlights the individual's subjective experience of their cultural identity. A client, named Sarah, visits a therapist seeking guidance with her career aspirations. The therapist uses a holistic approach, focusing on Sarah's personal experiences, feelings, and values, to gain a deeper understanding of her goals and aspirations. Together, they work towards setting achievable goals, developing a plan of action, and reflecting on Sarah's progress along the way. Given the emphasis on the individual's personal growth, self-exploration, and empowerment, the model of therapy being used is best described as a person-centered therapy B. Reality Therapy C. Solution Focused Therapy D. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy A. Person-Centered Therapy Person-Centered Therapy is a client-centered approach that prioritizes the individual's unique experiences, feelings, and needs, creating a therapeutic relationship based on empathy genuineness, and unconditional positive regard that empowers clients to take responsibility for their own personal growth and development. The focus is on the client's growth and self-discovery, rather than solely on their problems or symptoms. Ms. Johnson is a social worker who has just taken on a new client, a young woman who has been living on the streets for the past few months and has recently given birth to her first child. The woman is struggling with addiction, and a lack of support from her family and friends. If Ms. Johnson wants to demonstrate the principle of partialization, which of the following would she do first? A. Make a list of resources. B. Ask the client what she wants to deal with first. C. Choose one half of the problems to focus on. D. Make a list of problems. B. Ask the client what she wants to deal with first. Utilizing the principle of partialization, the social worker's primary focus is to prioritize the client's immediate and pressing needs. By asking the client what they want to address first, the social worker can ensure that they are addressing the client's most pressing concerns and empower the client to take control of their own situation. This approach helps the client feel heard and valued, and it also ensures that the social worker is working in partnership with the client, rather than imposing their own ideas about what is best for the client. A little boy named Sam had to be taken away from his home because of his parents' neglectful treatment of him. Sam was placed in foster care once previously for the same reason that he was placed there this time. In the process of formulating a long-term strategy for Sam's future, which of the following should be considered the most significant goal? 
A. Returning Sam to his biological parents through reunification efforts B. Finding a suitable placement with extended family members or close relatives C. Providing long-term foster care as a permanent solution D. Finding a loving and stable adoptive family for Sam D. Finding a loving and stable adoptive family for Sam understand that children who are placed in foster care have already experienced significant instability and trauma in their lives. So, by finding a loving and stable adoptive family for Sam, the focus is on providing the child with a permanent home where they can grow and develop in a safe and nurturing environment. This is in contrast to returning the child to their biological parents, which may not be in the child's best interest if there is a history of neglectful treatment. Additionally, finding a loving and stable adoptive family for Sam helps to ensure that he is not subjected to further disruptions in his life, which can be detrimental to his long-term development and well-being. Which personality disorder is characterized by excessive attention-seeking behavior, overly dramatic and emotional expression, and an extreme need for approval and reassurance from others? A. Schizoid personality disorder B. Histrionic personality disorder C. Borderline personality disorder D. Antisocial personality disorder B. Histrionic Personality Disorder People with histrionic disorders are characterized by excessive attention-seeking, emotional expressiveness, and an excessive need for approval from others. People with this disorder often display dramatic or exaggerated emotions, engage in provocative behavior, and use their physical appearance to draw attention to themselves. They tend to be overly concerned with their appearance and can be overly theatrical in their behavior, which can make them seem superficial or shallow. Jim and Sarah have been married for 10 years and have two children. For the last three years, Jim has been battling an addiction, and throughout this time, Sarah has never stopped covering up for him, making excuses for him, and giving him money to maintain his addiction. According to the social worker they've been meeting with for counseling, Sarah is, a supporting her husband's recovery, b. a codependent, c. an enabler, d. a co-addict. C. An enabler Enabling behavior perpetuates the addict's problem by covering up the consequences of their actions, making excuses, and providing resources to support the addiction. Sarah's actions directly contribute to Jim's inability to take responsibility for his addiction and get the help he needs. If a client is diagnosed with high cholesterol, which medication will they most likely be prescribed to help lower their cholesterol levels? A. Oxycodone, Oxycontin, B. Atorvastatin, Lipitor, C. Haloperidol, Haldol, D. Alprazolam, Xanax. B. Atorvastatin, Lipitor. Atorvastatin is a medication used to lower cholesterol levels by blocking the production of cholesterol in the liver. It is not used to treat anxiety, making options A, C, and D incorrect. A diagnosis of high cholesterol, not anxiety, is the appropriate scenario for this question, making atorvastatin, Lipitor, the correct answer. Vanessa has been disappointed by what she sees as her lack of accomplishments compared to her siblings and has been battling with uncertainties over her future career ambitions. Her therapist has been helping her zero in on the root problems, make clear objectives, and prioritize actionable steps in the here and now, rather than ruminating on the past or external circumstances. The therapist encourages her to make responsible decisions and take initiative in order to achieve her goals. The most accurate description of the therapy model being applied is A. Dialectical Behavioral Therapy B. Reality Therapy C. Solution Focused Therapy D. None of the above B. Reality Therapy this method focuses on helping people achieve genuine changes in their lives by emphasizing practical, solution-focused strategies and the current reality rather than their beliefs about the past or the future. In reality therapy, the significance of making moral decisions and acting to bring about desired results is also emphasized. 
the example given in the question is definitely in line with reality therapy's core tenets and methods, including its emphasis on realistic goals, active client listening, feedback, and progress evaluation. The description of the therapist working with the client to pinpoint the fundamental problems and establish precise, attainable goals is also compatible with reality therapy's goal-setting component. James has been working to increase access to healthcare for underserved communities. He regularly meets with local politicians and healthcare providers to discuss ways to improve access and equity. He also attends public forums to voice his concerns and educate others on the importance of healthcare for all. What is James doing? A. Advocating B. Networking C. Campaigning D. Educating A. Advocating James is actively working to improve access to healthcare for underserved communities. He is engaging in various efforts, such as meeting with local politicians and healthcare providers and attending public forums, to voice his concerns and educate others on the importance of healthcare for all. This demonstrates a strong commitment to advocating for those who are in need and highlights James' efforts to bring about change and promote equity. By taking an active role in these efforts, James is helping to create a more equitable and just society. Congratulations on answering the practice questions. You're one step closer to becoming a more effective and knowledgeable social worker. I hope this video has been helpful in deepening your understanding of social work license exam questions. If you're interested in taking your studies further, I invite you to join me for a 90-minute session where we'll dive deeper into the various content areas and practical application when you sign up. You'll also receive my 70 social work practice exam question ebook and my strategies for success activity book, both of which will help you continue your learning journey. The link to sign up is in the description below. I look forward to studying with you and helping you become the best social worker you can be. Thanks again for watching.